It's November 16th, 2086, Seneca Rocks, West Virginia. I'm, I'm so sorry, Olivia. I wish, I wish it hadn't come to this. Hero to the end. Brody, you can come out now. God, I've never seen anything like that. That's it then? Yeah, she was the last. It's all over. Give me a hand, would ya? Let's get out of here. Sorry. One last thing. Brody. What? And with that, the order of mysteries passed into history. But what could bring a mother and daughter to this point, where a daughter seeks to destroy everything her mother has created, followed by killing her mother? And why did it lead to her own death? I'm Lemon Rain, and this is Fallout History, where we explore the stories behind some of the biggest events in Fallout history. This month, we explore the tragedy of the Order of Mysteries. To understand how this tragedy occurred, we need to turn back the clock to 2077, before the Great War. The Silver Shroud, a mysterious vigilante, had seen success for decades in radio plays and comics produced by Hubris Comics, and was making the big jump to television, and her longtime voice Shannon Rivers, aged 53 at the time, wanted to be ready, undertaking an impressive training regime to allow her to shine on the silver screen. Her inventor husband, Frederick, was equally up for the challenge. We finished off the basement with two days to spare. I might even have time to squeeze in that little folding screen I've been toying with. Zack and his boys got the mainframe online this morning. I let him test out the Hall of Trials while I put it through its paces. Worked like a dream. Laser turrets are still a mite touchy, though. Burned that toupee clean off. She loved it. I've never seen her so happy. Meanwhile, Shannon and Frederick were ignorant of the harm that this preparation had done with their daughter, Olivia. We're actually going to miss the camping trip this year. I figured Mom was planning some kind of surprise, even if it was just for a weekend. We've been going to the same spot every year for as long as I can remember. It's always been our special place. Those trips are the one chance we had to just be together, where I didn't have to play the perfect daughter, the flawless student. Where I could just be myself. I'm looking forward to college. I'm ready to get out of here. Shannon's dream was not to be. She would be discarded by the studio in an act of blatant age discrimination on the 22nd of October, 2077. Babowski played me for a fool. After a week of dress rehearsals, he called me in to say they'd made other arrangements for the role of the mistress. It wasn't hard to figure out who. He had a portrait of Claire Riddell, that airbrained strumpet on his desk. He was planning this all along. I gave that bastard a piece of my mind. I've been the voice of the Mistress of Mystery for 26 years. It's the role I cared about most, the character I championed every time Creative tried to set up another love triangle or damsel in distress plot. And now I'm being cut out. Vivi says corporate's already in talks to hire Riddell for next season serials. Damn them. The next day, the Great War came upon the world. We don't know what life was like for the Rivers family in the immediate aftermath, but in July 2078, about nine months later, Shannon would record the following. When the weather finally broke, we made for Charleston to replenish our supplies. On the way back, we were accosted by hooligans on the road. Frederick tried to pay them off. Some fresh water? A few hundred dollars? They just laughed. When they laid hands on Olivia, something in me snapped. I don't think they expected the old bitch to put up a fight. But my training just took over. I didn't even hesitate. In less than a minute, they were all laid out on the ground. I think a couple of them were dead. We had a long talk about the incident. I expected Olivia to be as frightened as I was, but she was exhilarated. Like I was suddenly a real hero. She wants me to train her. I wish it wasn't necessary, but Frederick has a point. 
The world has changed. We won't be around forever. One way or another, she has to learn to defend herself. But is that enough? What kind of future does she have if the world has fallen to pieces? And what about girls who don't have anyone to stand up for them? Shannon began venturing out as the mistress. Although she felt silly, she also felt the outfit gave her confidence. Shannon believed her family was on board. And although her husband was, when it came to her daughter, she was mistaken. The whole hero thing was cute for a while. Lover really is good at it. But it's gone to her head. Now she wants to adopt those rats she found rooting for our garbage? And train them? I tried to argue with her. There are whole caravans of refugees on the road. We can't save everyone. Who do you help? And who do you pass over? Why take in free strangers and send the torrents boy away? We barely made it through last winter as it was. We have to think of ourselves, too. Those rats were a trio of orphaned children. Clarissa, Eve, and Amy. All younger than Olivia. The boy will come back to. More would follow. Olivia would, however, accept the training that her mother offered as would her adoptive sisters. Despite her initial misgivings, the Order would undertake its mission as guardians of the wasteland without casualty and expanding in number until 2086. I always knew this day would come, but that doesn't make it any easier. These girls are my daughters. Every time I post a mission, I know one of them might not come back, but we have to press on. The raiders are gaining strength. If we don't keep them in check, who will? For Olivia, long-simmering resentment finally bubbled back to the surface. Her adoptive sister, Clarissa, died on a mission. Then she was overlooked for the mistress of novices' position. What people need is order. They need leadership. The responders are weak. The Brotherhood can care about anyone but themselves. With the order? We could do anything. We could rule Appalachia. Instead, we hide. We cower. No more. The raiders may be hard, but they live in the real world. Not this fantasy. What they do is real. It matters. It's time I come out of the shadows. And damn anyone who gets in my way. I found my opening. I've been taking checkpoint missions trying to scope out the raiders. And I recognized one. Brody. Kid used to live next door. Through Brody, the boy turned away by Shannon, a contract was struck between her and the Cutthroats gang. Olivia would sell out her sisters and the Order, eventually culminating with her own mother. In exchange, she demanded a blank check, anything she wanted. The Cutthroats agreed to this bargain. Olivia's plan led her to leak to the Cutthroats for Order's missions for the next two months, and the bodies would soon start to pile up until Shannon stood alone. It's finally over. I'm going to burn the order, the manor, everything. Burn all to the ground. If you get this, if you want to see me again, meet me under a special place. On my birthday. You still owe me that trip. And there, they and the order would take its final moments on Seneca Rocks, leaving behind a dying mother embracing the dying daughter who betrayed her, and who, in turn, was betrayed herself on the 16th of November. 2086.